Hey guys, and welcome to another Heavy House tutorial. Today I'm going to be updating an older tutorial I did on displacement. There's been a few changes, I just wanted to go over those. So what you see in front of you is a piece that I did. Um, it's just a single sphere, an environment, a camera, and some lights, and then a single node. And uh, it is a fairly hefty node tree. All the animation is happening inside of here. I'll show you this video real quick and then we'll take a look at doing something a little bit simpler. As you can see, the displacement in Cycles 4D can be very powerful and look really nice. So let's start building something. Let's start by doing displacement off of a normal image texture. So we're going to go down to Create, Cycles 4D, Object Material. We're just going to drag and drop that onto our plane. In our plane, we we'll set our width and height segments to 10. And this is how we're going to have it set up. Uh, I'm going to try something a little new. I'm going to use the viewport rendering. So I'm going to click on viewport and go over to the view Cinema 4D tab. Now we can see a live render and still navigate around our scene. I'm going to take off the specular and close this node down. I have a few different texture packs that have landscapes and such. So I'm just going to grab one of them drag and drop that image in. I'm going to add in our displacement node. We're going to take our mountain valley height map and we're going to plug that into the height of the displacement and then plug the displacement into the displacement in the output. You'll see now we've got what looks to be that mountain texture but we don't actually have any displacement happening. It's very flat. So this is just a bump at the moment. To fix that, we're gonna grab our output node, go to material settings. You'll notice when we click on our displacement method, there's three different options. There's bump, there's true, and there's both. So let's click on true first. True will take the map that you have and just displace it with as much detail as your geometry allows it to have. So if we go back to our plane, set the width segments up to 50 by 50, you can see we're getting more and more detail. So maybe 500 by 500. Okay, so now this is gonna start getting a little heavy if you've got a lot of this in the scene, so there's better ways to do this. So let's go ahead and just set this back down to 10, 10 go back to our output node and from true we're going to change it to both so both not only adds in the displacement that was happening based off the geometry but it also adds it in as a bump map on top and it kind of gives you this extra micro detail that um, you don't necessarily always need to have displaced in this case it's still a little too jagged for this to look good um, but we're going to look at other ways to fix that. So we'll leave it at 20 and 20 for now. Um, the other way that you could set this up is if you go back to the output and change this back to true, just have our regular displacement, is you can take your image texture, grab a bump node, Plug that into the height of the bump node and then plug that bump actually into your shader. But if you wanted to kind of layer bump maps on top of each other or have different ones that you didn't necessarily want displacing the object, just wanted to add in a little bit of extra detail, you could still run it through the shader. I'm going to take that off and set it back to both. Okay, so now let's look, make this look a little bit nicer without having to increase our geometry to an insane amount. So with the plane selected, we're going to go to Tags, 
cycles 4d tags cy object under cy object we're going to go to displacement and we're going to change the subdivision type from none to linear and you can see right away we just got a lot of detail in there So what's currently happening is we go to our Cycles 4D render settings. We come down here to subdivision. There's a subdivision rate in pixels and that's set to five. Now you can think about this as a global parameter and these uh, object tags as on a kind of a per object. Now it won't subdivide any of your objects unless you have the subdivision activated here. So it's not like every object in your scene is getting subdivided by Cycles 4D, just the stuff that you have the subdivision applied here. But say on you had two of these mountains, one of them was farther in the background, you probably don't need as much subdivision for it if you're not getting as close to it. So if you duplicated it and drag it in the back, you know, maybe its subdivision rate could be set to, could be set to five. Now it's going to be taking up less uh, GPU space. And since you don't need that extra detail, you know, you could experiment with this and see, you know, 10 maybe even works fine or 20 um, or even higher. So you'll use these to kind of really fine tune and, and improve your scene. So how the displacement calculates is based on pixels. It's not based on your geometry. If I click on the plane, I can actually set our width segments down to one and our height segments down to one. As long as we have our subdivision turned on, it is still gonna give you this same look. It didn't change. And that's because it is based on how many pixels that is taking up. So if I zoom in really close right now, it's technically subdividing it more than at this distance, which is actually really nice so that the scene will load up more efficiently. And I have very little geometry. All this is just happening at render time and my scene will stay really quick. If you come back over to the Cycles 4D real-time preview, you can see the subdivision rate here. This is just the preview rate of what you're seeing in the live viewer or in the real-time preview. Um, I don't, I haven't actually seen this update when I've been changing it, so I'm not 100% sure that that is working correctly, but it definitely is showing less than what gets rendered out. Uh, if I take, for example, take this dicing scale to five, maybe, and we're viewing it, and we see we've got some jagged edges here. If I render this really quickly, you can see this render has more detail in it than our live viewer. So it is, it is showing less, um, but it doesn't seem to actually update whenever I have changed this around. Not sure I'll have to do some more research on that. Okay, so let's try another object. So that's that's a mountain. Let's just delete that out. Let's grab another image texture. Let's grab this leather height map. Take this, pipe it into the height, and you can see now we have this kind of leather cushion displacement happening. We can change our scale if we want it to be really subtle or I don't know what this would be, but there you go. Um, all of this will still work if you needed to say scale this down um, as far as on the X and Y or X and Z in this case. So if I just scale this down, 
Now we're getting the exact same height. We're just getting, it's just shrinking. It's just shrinking in the X and Y. So maybe pull down the scale to help kind of match that. And there we go. If we needed even more detail, we could come into our subdivision and maybe decrease that down. It takes a little bit longer for it to load up, but it's nice and smooth now. Set that back to one. Okay, so now let's do something that I always enjoy, which is let's make something procedural. Let's pull back on this. We'll try to do kind of a quick mountain procedurally. Let's grab a texture coordinate node. Sorry if I go fast on this. Um, this is mainly about the displacement and not so much how I'm building it, but grab a uh, gradient texture node. We're going to change it to spherical. Pipe this in. Let's preview that. Okay, we now have just this uh, sphere gradient. I'm going to grab my uniform scale node that I built. And then let's just scale this up so it's closer to the edge of our plane. Okay, not that far. There we go. Let's pipe that into our displacement and see what that looks like. We'll set the scale back to one. Get out of that. Okay, now we have this cone shape. The gradient is white in the center, so that's our peak down to black, which is not displaced at all. Okay, well, we need some variation in this to kind of look like a mountain. So let's grab a noise texture. I'm going to unplug the displacement for a second just so we can see this better. Let's click on the factor of the noise, add in a color ramp, view that. Let's crush these values a bit. There we go. There's some, some black and some white still left in here. Now I'm going to add those values on top of our cone. So I'm going to add in a math node. Let's preview what that looks like. So you can see here, here's the center of our cone, radiates out, and we'll plug that into displacement and see what that gives us. That's fun. Here we go. Okay, so definitely a little more in detail, but still not looking really, uh, you know, to me it doesn't have enough of the original shape. So let's get some of that back. Let's take our uh, gradient, pipe that into a color ramp, and undo the, the take the displacement off for a second again so we can view what this is going to look like. Let's solo this, and I really want to kind of clamp this section and then set it to multiply over top of our noise to really help define that shape. So let's duplicate this math node, change it to multiply. We'll set our noise to the value two and our uh, modified color uh, gradient to the multiply. So we can see this now is that the noise is still here, but it kind of just feathers off on the edges. Then that's getting combined with our uh, initial cone. We can plug that into the height and now we've kind of defined a better looking shape. Again, nothing to, uh, you know, necessarily hang your hat on, but it is, the idea is there. Um, you know, say you want to increase the, the fine detail. Well, now it's gotten a little too high. You could take in this color ramp um, and just Bring this white value down so you're not adding on so much now you've got just a little there we go sure that's that's a mountain i'm sure i could make this look i know i could make this look better but i think that shows off the technique a little bit let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you guys later